Okay, here's the question. Do you think Lefty knows how a nitro engine works? How about new? That question is going to be answered in this video. We also answer the questions to why do we run nitro fuel? Why not just normal fuel? It's way cheaper. And what's the definition of rich and lean? What's actually happening there? And why can't we just tune our engine one time and leave it? Why do we have to keep retuning? Such a hassle. Now, if you want answers to more questions than just those, then please watch the full video. It's one hour, 20 minutes, I know, but it's one hour, 20 minutes of value. So please go watch that after this. But anyway, let's get into it. So before we talk about the tuning of the carb, I think it's helpful to look at the engine and just go over the basics so you understand how the engine works. Because if I just explain how to tune the engine and you don't understand what's happening, then you're just going to memorize it. And when you memorize how to tune a carb, it doesn't really necessarily make sense. And maybe you'll forget some things and you'll be in a situation where you can't figure out what to do because you don't remember or what I said, which direction were you supposed to tune and it, it's not the best way to do it. The, the best way to learn to tune an engine is to understand what's happening and when you understand the basic principles of what's happening then you can be in a situation where you need to tune the engine, you can take a step back, you can think about what's happening and then you can figure it out. That's the best way. Uh, and that's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it. So when the engine's running, what's happening is that air enters the carb through the air filter, fuel ent enters from the fuel tank through the fuel tubing, uh, enters the carb, and in the carb body, the air and the fuel mix. Then the cr as the crankshaft turns, it's actually hollow and there's an opening in it. So it opens up and the air and fuel mixture enters the crankshaft and as it's hollow it then travels through the crankshaft and exits through the back of the crankshaft and from there it then gets sucked up into the sleeve through the ports in the sleeve uh, above the piston. So then if we imagine this is the piston we now have this mixture of air and fuel above the piston and the piston is moving up and up above we have the head button and uh, the combustion chamber essentially with the glow plug up at the top. So the piston is moving up and it's compressing this mixture of air and fuel. And then right at the top here what happens is um, the compressed mixture of air and fuel, the oxygen in the air and the fuel, they react thanks to the spark from the glow plug. So what happens is it catches fire, but it's under pressure, so it's actually an explosion. And that explosion pushes the piston back down. Now I said spark, but in real cars, they actually have spark plugs and they're actually timed to give a spark at a certain time, but we don't have that. So in our engines, we have a glow plug. And what happens is that the wire, the filament of the glow plug, it just, keeps glowing. That's what you do when you put the glow igniter on. You are feeding an electrical current to the glow plug and making it glow. And then once the engine is running, it stays glowing. So we essentially have a constant spark. But anyway, that's like a side note. So just remember, piston is moving up. You have the mixture of air and fuel and you have this glowing plug up there. And as it compresses somewhere here at the top, explosion, piston moves down. That explosion is actually the power of the engine. Essentially it's the power of the engine because that's what pushes the piston down and uh, then the exhaust exits through the exhaust port, through the manifold and the pipe and the crankshaft which I had the opening, the opening had actually closed at this point, now it reopens and new air and fuel enters the crankshaft and then the cycle repeats. 
So that's how that engine keeps running. So that's how it works. So the key to engine performance is actually that explosion. We want a really powerful explosion. We want the engine to have a lot of power. And the key to that is, is really the amount of oxygen and the amount of fuel. That determines what kind of explosion we get and how the engine runs. In chemistry, there's actually this thing called stoichiometry. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Is it stoichiometry? Stoichiometry. Let's just say it's stoichiometry. And there's something called the stoichiometric ratio. And that actually let's 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 back back up a bit. Back up. Stoichiometry, what the hell is that? So stoichiometry is a study where you study the, the ratios of different chemicals that react and then the result of that. So in this case, we would be studying the amount of oxygen and the amount of fuel and then them reacting and then what's left over. So there's something called a stoichiometric ratio. And for us, that would mean that in the combustion event, all the oxygen is burned up and all the fuel is burned up. And that's like the perfect scenario. The combustion event happens and it's an efficient, clean burn. The fuel is burned up, the oxygen is burned up. We're making maximum power in theory. Now, in gasoline engines, in real cars, they actually measure this. They want to know what the stoichiometric ratio is. And it's something like 14.7 to one. That's what I found when I used the Google. And what that means is you need 14.7 units of air to one unit of fuel. So you need a lot more air than fuel to achieve this perfect burn, perfect combustion event. Now in our engines, we actually don't need that much air compared to the fuel because think about it. So we are very limited with the size and we can't get that much much oxygen into these things. Can't get that much air in here. So we use different fuel. That's why we use uh, fuel with nitromethane in it. So methanol and nitromethane. And the thing is that they burn better than gasoline. And the reason that is, is because nitromethane, it contains oxygen in itself. So we can get more power by using this fuel because we, we don't just rely on the oxygen in the atmosphere. We also have oxygen in the fuel that we run. So this gives us more power. So we want as much air as possible into the, into the engine, as much oxy, oxygen as we can get into that combustion chamber. And then we want to adjust the amount of fuel so that the ratio is just right. That's essentially what the carb is doing. We are adjusting the amount of fuel that enters the engine to match the amount of oxygen that we have. So remember I said that there's this thing called the stoichiometric um, ratio. And that means that in the combustion event, all the oxygen and all the fuel burns up. So let's just imagine we're at that point now. That's how our engine is running. If we then allow more fuel to enter, what would happen is that all the oxygen would burn up, but there would be some fuel left over. And that's what we call rich. So the engine would be running rich. There's fuel left over and that's actually a good thing because in the fuel we have oil and the oil is what lubricates the engine. So if we run the engine rich, that means that in the combustion event, the oxygen burns and there's fuel left over, which means that there's oil left over that lubricates the parts. So it's a good way to run an engine because it runs cooler, it protects all the moving parts. It's a safe way to run an engine. Then if you reverse that, if you say we're running at this perfect stoichiometric ratio where all that oxygen, all the fuel is burning up, if we reduce the amount of fuel that enters the engine, then we are in a situation where all the fuel gets burned up in the combustion event, but there's some oxygen left over. 
Now this isn't a very good way to run an engine because what happens is there's not that much lubrication left because you're burning up all the fuel. There's so much oxygen compared to the amount of fuel that it's burning up all the fuel that, and the oils that would be there to lubricate the parts. So typically the engine run, runs hotter and it's not good for the engine. Obviously with an engine, the whole point is that you can run it at idle, then you can open the throttle more and get more power. And then full throttle, you have maximum power. So there's, there's this sliding scale of the throttle is closed, it's idling, and then throttle is fully open, maximum power. Now, as the throttle opens, more air is entering the carb and then the engine. We need to, through using the needles here, that's actually why a carb has more than one needle. We have high speed needle, low speed needle. We need to adjust these so that throughout the full range of the carb's positions, the ratio between the air and the fuel is good. That's really what the needles themselves and their positions uh, do. That they regulate the amount of fuel at different throttle positions so, so that it matches the amount of air in the air that can enter the engine through the carb. And that's what we are doing when, when we are tuning the engine. And now it might make, make sense to you why you can't just tune the engine once and then leave it. Because that's what we would all like. We'd like to tune an engine one time and then just forget about it. Now it's good, performs well, just leave it. It's good, it's good. Imagine a scenario where your engine's running perfectly, just dialed, master tuner level. So let's say you go to the track and it's much hotter than before. So in high temperature, there's going to be less oxygen in the air. So your engine will run a bit rich. So you might have to lean out your engine a bit. Because remember, you still have the same amount of fuel going in the engine, but now there's less oxygen. So all the oxygen burns, fuel left over, it's rich. Then at low temperature, there's a lot more oxygen in the air. So at low temperature, your engine might run a bit lean, and then you might have to richen your engine a bit. Same goes for altitude. So high altitude, less oxygen. Your engine r could run a bit rich, might have to lean out the engine. Low altitude, sea level for example, more oxygen. So your engine might run lean and then you might have to richen your engine a bit. And then last of all, humidity. So at high humidity, now it flips. High humidity, more oxygen in the air. So your engine might run lean might have to reach in your engine a bit. And then low humidity, less oxygen, and your engine might run rich. So you might have to lean out the engine a bit. So these things affect the tune, and that's why we need to constantly uh, adjust our engines. Okay, I think we can go to take a look at the carb now. Uh, did you get that, Keenan? I don't really care, so I don't understand. What? Right over my head. How do you not understand? I just spent 10 minutes explaining something that a child could understand. I don't go in science mode like you, man. The performance of an engine depends on that air-fuel mixture. As long as it runs and no cuts out and has power, I'm good. And you adjust that mixture. You regulate that mixture by tuning the carb. It's responsible for maintaining that mixture throughout all the positions of the throttle. That's the idea. I just heard something about stoi kilometers. There's something, no, not stoi kilometers. There's something called the stoichiometric ratio. It means that it's a perfect combustion. All the oxygen, all the fuel burns. Nobody cares about stoi kilometers or whatever that is. If the oxygen burns and there's fuel left over, the mixture is rich. If the opposite happens, all the fuel burns, and there's oxygen left over, it's lean. When an engine runs rich, it's good because there's fuel and oil left over in the engine to lubricate it. That's how you should run your engine. Just make it run. What don't you understand? I don't understand how your brain functions, man. It's not rocket science. You get all nerdy, man. Oh my God, this guy. Did you understand? I hope you understood. If not, then just go back and listen to it again.